Hello out there. Thanks for joining me today. This is a video about understanding the creation story, and it's a belief that this is a biblical allegory. Some people try to make the claim that uh, the Bible is giving us a literal creation, how God creates the world in seven days. This story is a story about you. It's about how we go from being a person of the world to becoming a spiritual person. Let's take a look at these six days of creation here and see how this works. All right, the first day, God said, let there be light. But you notice there on the fourth day is where the sun is created. All right, you can't have light in a physical world without the sun. So clearly this is not a literal story. All right, take a look at all these things. We have first day, let there be light. The second day, we have the seas. Third day, vegetation. Fourth day, sun, moon, and stars. Fifth day, the birds and the fish. And the sixth day, we have animals and people. Each of these things represents some step in our spiritual path to becoming a truly spiritual person. The seventh day, we rest. All right, so let's take a look at the symbolism here and see how this applies to us. All right, in the beginning, the world was a dark and formless place. Simple enough. This is a person before they've started on a spiritual path. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And this is our first step on the path of noticing that there's a difference between right and wrong. That's the difference between light and dark, seeing that difference. Second day of creation, uh, God separated the land from the sea. Let me give you a more precise translation for this one that uh, gets some of the nuance and the symbolism here. And God made the expanse, and he made a distinction between the waters that were under the expanse and the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. You know, the ancients saw the water above as your, your sky and your rain, and the water below as your oceans. Okay, so water above and water below. And water represents truth, which is kind of a way of saying that some things are more true than others. Learning to prioritize, learning to see a true truth. So that second day of creation is learning how to see real truth, being able to see beyond an appearance and prioritizing things properly. So that's the next part of your path. Now the third day, it, God creates vegetation. But before that, God said, let the waters under heaven be gathered together to one place and let dry land appear. So again, water representing truth, so teachings, things that we learn, uh, they're gathered together. You start to have some organization in your life as you've prioritized things, you've learned things, you've prioritized things, and now you've kind of gathered them together in a, almost a systematic belief. Third day, we have vegetation. And plants and vegetation, they, it's, a, it's a new phase of life where we start doing good things. So the teachings we've learned have now translated into positive actions. And some plants are going to bear more fruit. So just like we do good deeds for some people, and sometimes that gets paid on forward, that's bearing fruit. And sometimes our good deeds bear more fruit than others. And that's a different kind of plants that we can have. On the fourth day, we have the great lights, the sun, the moon, and the stars. And the sun is love, meaning we have love in our life. We're not just doing things because we have to do them. We're making ourselves do them. We love them. We have faith in God because of this love. And we now have stars, which is these teachings that guide us. Imagine yourself in a dark place. You hang on a certain teaching that guides you back to the next sunrise, like an ancient ship, uh, ship uh, uh, captain. You know, he guides by the stars. Same thing happens to us when we enter those dark places. On the fifth day of creation, we have the fish and the birds. The things that we know have been brought to life through faith from God. All right, now this isn't just brought to life because, you know, we can say, oh, well, vegetation was already happening. But these things are brought to life because they're done out of love. The things you know are done out of love, and that's what creates life. Once a person has been brought to life by love and faith, and you believe that the Lord is at work in every good thing you do and in every good thing you speak, 
he is compared to the first creeping things from the water and to the birds which fly above the earth. Okay, so you're doing good things because you love it. It's a different state. Then we move to the last day, the sixth day. We have animals, so things on the ground, and these are the things that we desire. The beasts are the loves that we have in our life, and the wild animals of the earth are the pleasures of the body. Now, when we speak the truth and do good actions, we create a living creature called an animal or a beast. Then we become creators, spiritual people, and become an image of God. So this is the progression from a dark and formless place to at the end, we are this image of God that creates living things, things that we love to do. We do them because we love them and they are good. And then on the seventh day, we rest. Because let's face it, to get from the first day to the sixth day, it's a struggle. It's, it's work to do this. But by the seventh day, we've become spiritual masters. That, my friends, is a, a quick rundown on a allegorical look at the creation story. Hope this is helpful. Thanks very much for watching, and God bless.